data warehouse is something you can store your data okay and data warehouse is a place where the business can tap on that to get the information out of that okay a data warehouse actually it is different than a database some people say that uh, database is different data warehouse is different yes concept wise it they are different but basically to build a data warehouse you need a database concept wise data warehouse and database are different but physically if you have to build a data warehouse you have to have a database but the way you design the data the way you put the format of the data is different than a database okay so what is a data warehouse if you talk about any normal warehouse you have a food warehouse right in the food warehouse what you will do you call your food grains or you have the uh, warehouse to put your stock if you are working in a sales company or you you have the stock you will put your stock in a warehouse right so warehouse is a secure place where you can put your things up in the same way if you want to secure your data or if you want to put the things in a centralized place right for for the future purposes then you will put in a place called data warehouse right example of the data warehouse can be something like this right data warehouse can be uh, something like example telecom company can put all the customer billing information in its warehouse or company can put all the policy information of the different policy holders in a data warehouse or a sales company can put the sales information about the different products in a data warehouse for the different timely information so the the, the, the different organization will use it in a different way right so this is something about the data warehouse right so what is the architecture of data warehousing architecture of data warehousing something like this right uh, you will have operational data example the information which is coming in the flat files or some some other source you do the etl tool which is using the ssis you look to in database called uh, maybe in sql server database but in a different slightly different way which we call this data warehouse and we use a concept called olap there we can generate a concept called cube if you see this particular structure this is cube what we are talking right we use this with a concept called ssas right use a concept called ssas and then we have something called reporting right and then we have something called reporting where the business is can get all report and we use a tool called ssrs so where is data warehouse in sitting here in the overall architecture data warehouse is sitting here right data warehouse is sitting in a place here right this is data warehouse if you can see this what is happening here in the overall ba architecture data warehouse is sitting in a place something called here you have the different sources you use ssis to load the data into data warehouse right and then you use the olap concept where you use the concept of ssis to generate some cubes and then you put your Okay, but the data warehouse will be sitting here. This is a very simple picture, right? But most effective picture where you can remember this if you are dealing the this this kind of stuff for the first time, right? And then in the next few slides, right? I already told you that we have a concept called OLAP, right? I do, I promise you that in the next few slides I'll show you much about the OLAP. Okay, so in the next few slides, right? What we'll do is we'll study about the concept of OLTP and OLAP. So, what is OLTP and what is OLAP? Okay, so we we study about these two concepts and we compare what how the OLTP and OLAP data is stored, right? So there is there are two concepts when you're dealing with the concept of data warehouse or when you deal with the concept of business intelligence. Basically, you have to deal with two concepts. One is OLTP. Second one is OLAP. One is OLTP. Second one is OLAP. What is OLTP? OLTP is nothing but online transactional processing. Okay. 
what is OLTP? Online Analytical Processing. Okay, we'll read something about the OLTP first. Okay, so the if you if you can see if you can see the image here, what is happening? Somebody is keeping their ATM card in a ATM machine to get some money. Right? So everybody does that, right? If you're attending this course, I'm sure you'll have an ATM card. Right? So you go to your ATM machine card and just put your card in the ATM machine and you type your password and withdraw the amount and automatically cash comes out of that. Right? So what is happening here? There is something happening in the form of a transaction. There is some transaction happening. Right? So what is the transaction here? You have input that I need hundred dollars from the ATM. You have given that as input. What is the transaction? It will give the hundred dollars from the ATM machine and at the same time it will deduct your hundred dollars from your account. Right? So this is a transaction. So basically what is the transaction? The real simple English terms of transaction is if a process is started. If a process is started, either it has to be completed successfully or go back to the position where it has started. If a process is started, that process has to be completed successfully or it has to go to the position where it has started, where it was started. It means that you withdraw some money from the ATM and due to some power failure, you then get money. And it has to make sure that that money should not be deducted from your bank account. If anything goes wrong between these two cases, then everything is messed up. Example, it is not giving $200 to you, but it is saying that $200 is deducted from your account. Then you will call up the bank. If it happens to, thousand customers, one million customers, what happens? The bank will go down, right? So it has to maintain some transaction. If it happens, everything has should happen. If it does not happen, everything should not happen, right? That is, that is a transaction. So basically, some of the transaction systems are internet banking or ATM card or ordering applications. Example, flipkart.com, amazon.com are also transactional systems, right? Or ERP system where you are Right? Or wherever you are doing the transaction, the no, transaction that is called as a transaction system. Example, if you are going to a shopping mall and you go to a shop and you pay the bill, right, and they give the receipt to you, that is also a transaction system. Right? Whatever happens there is called as transaction system. Right? So these are the few examples of transaction processing. Transaction the things will be done at the right away, right? But this something called as OLAP. What is OLAP? Online analytical processing. Okay, online analytical processing something OLAP. Okay, OLAP is not a straightforward thing like OLTP. It is not a right away thing, but it is a long term thing. Okay, what is it? It is a technology that is used to organize large business databases and support business intelligence. Okay, it, it enables the ability to analyze metrics in different dimensions such as time, geography, product. Okay, so what is an online analytical processing? Example, there is a company, there is a company which is doing some sales. Right, there is a company which is doing some sales, and there are a lot of sales happening in the company. Right, but Example, if the company is doing the sales for six months or one year and you want to know some information out of it. What is my top selling product? What is the product which is giving more profits for me? Can you give me a store location where there are number of, where, where there are highest number of revenues? Can you give me a store location where they were making more losses? Right? These kind of questions are on a long term basis and you can have the questions answered only using some set of data. In this kind, kind of concept, we use a concept called online analytical processing to do some analysis on your existing data. Where we use the concept of OLAP in it and we develop the concept of cube to generate multi-dimensional structures. And that will be available in a tool called SSAS, SQL Server Analysis Services. If I go back to this slide, 
I told you this is for OLAP and we develop cubes here and we will do it with a tool called SQL Server Analysis Services. Right? How will we do? We will study in module 6 and module 7. Okay? So one example of OLAP what I can do is say what region is the most responsible for this increase? What particular product category is attributed most interest? Right? I just told you, right? I, I have given you few few examples. This, uh, this is another example where uh, you can use OLAP to answer your questions. Okay? So what is the difference between OLTP and OLAP? OLTP is for operations. Right? What is OLTP? OLTP is for operations. Means it should be right away thing. Example, just put your ATM card, withdraw money, done. Go to a shop, done. Right? Or go to com, go to amazon.com, purchase some product, pay the bill, done. Go to some airways, right? Go to some airways website, book a ticket, done. Go to a holiday website, book a holiday, done. Go to a hotel booking website, book a hotel, done. Right? Right away things is called as OLTP. But if you want to do some analysis on some existing information, then OLAP. OLTP is based on business strategy, which is on business process, right? Because right away things. OLAP is on analytics, which is basically built data warehouse. But these two systems will be talking together. This is the difference between OLTP and OLAP, right? Okay. So how the data is stored within OLTP and OLAP, that's fine. So uh, right now I, uh, I can explain you more about this concept when I am dealing with model 6 and model 7, which gives you more fair idea than this particular information, right? Okay, so if you, under, if you want to understand more difference about the OLTP and OLAP, what is the purpose of OLTP? For running the business processes. What is the purpose of OLAP? OLAP to anal do some analysis. So what is the nature of data transactional? Yes, right. So source data is captured during the business process. Example, you are paying a bill and your your customer data will enter, or you are placing an order in Amazon.com. Your login credentials are stored and it will be shipped to your address. Right. That is the source of data is coming from the user, right? During the business process. But for OLP, OLP, the source of data is coming from. The source of data is coming from. OLTP databases or file systems or any other systems, right? Age of data is is current information. This is field information. Right? So number of users, number of users, are number of users. Uh, there, there is something wrong in the slides, but the number of users here are many users. The number of users here are very less, right? And I'll, I'll make a correction here, right? What is the load frequency? It depends on the business scenario. And very important, this particular thing, database design, in OLTP, we call it as a normalized design. Okay? If you are talking about a normal database, RDBMS database, we have a normalization concept. Database design is normalized, OLTP concept called denormalized. Okay? There are few concepts called normalization denormalization and unnormalization. Three important topics which we will read in module 5 where we read the comprehensive stuff about the data warehouse. Okay? Right? Uh, let me erase all drawings. Go to normal mode. 